uh, Charles Manson found a message in the Beatles song that told him what he must do and why he had to kill, uh, suppressing everything that one might think of as potentially explosive or dangerous or, or uh, provocative would still not prevent a true psychotic from finding something that would trigger off his own particular psychosis. If you take the very paternalistic, elitist view of society, which is that everyone is an idiot and is a dangerous hooligan and must therefore be controlled and channeled and, and structured and imprisoned, that's, that's a whole other thing. I mean, then you, you say, well, no, I'm the only one or we are the only ones who really understand how things should be run. And we are the only ones who really are fit to protect the children of this country. Even their parents are not. Parliament does not allow us to leave it all to parents. It just doesn't. We have to act in loco parentis. And this is based on a great deal of research that parents are not taking sufficient responsibility for the children's cinema going or video viewing. They weren't in the past. Richard Hefner chairman of the Ratings Administration for the Motion Picture Association of America. Hefner operates a system which only classifies. His board is funded by the movie industry and no member of the film community is required by law to submit a film for prior censorship. Films not submitted simply play uncut in cinemas outside major exhibition chains. He does not touch video cassettes. Our assumption is that uh, the public shall judge, not the public shall be damned. Uh, our assumption is that parents will make up their own minds, appropriately so, about the level of uh, roughness or maturity of the content of the films that they'll see, and that our job is to offer them a, an early warning signal about the level of harshness of that material. Valenti and the others, when they created the system, six years before I arrived on the scene, uh, understood viscerally that it was most appropriate for this country not to censor but to classify and if we could do so honestly reasonably rationally and that's very a very big if then we could prevent by satisfying their needs prevent parents from saying censor the bastards but I found with my own children that they uh absolutely literally put their hands over would put hands over ears and over eyes in order not to see something that they found beyond what they could take at the same time though they had a definite desire to test themselves and to take themselves to the limit of what they could expose themselves to in terms of just things that were scary or disturbing um, and i think that's natural and normal uh, my wife is very much involved uh, as a therapist uh, in the mental health of children and frequently she'll see a film with me and um, be quite disturbed at what's in the film and say, haven't you ever read Freud? Don't you know what this kind of material will do to children? And my response to Elaine is, haven't you ever read Jefferson? Because we have this balance that we have to maintain. An understanding of the potential for harm in media, in anything. And an understanding, too, for the, of the potential for harm in censorship. I really feel that if you were exposed for a period of time to the type of material that's being ex exported from the United States, that his Jeffersonian principles would be a little shakier. We should only cut something if the companies say we must have the lower category or if we think it's socially harmful. We can always just classify it a higher, higher rating. Uh, we do cut some 18 films because some of the stalk and slash films and sadistic films are, we think, genuinely dangerous. Um, and on video, of course, we have the extra test of suitability for viewing in the home. The hallmark of a civilized people, or one of the hallmarks of a civilized people, is the capacity to distinguish between mature adults and youngsters. The idea would be to remain true to yourself when you're making the picture, to remain true to what you feel is the reason you wanted to make the film. It's simple. It's not easy to make a picture. You don't, you know, it's not like you, I don't get paid like a, I'm not, I don't call myself a director. A director for me is a person who, you know, gets a property and somehow shows up on the set and actually shows up real early, like a, I've always said this, like 6.30, sometimes 7, and you get there and you, can, and, and you have an actor, an actress, or whatever, and you've got to convince them to come out of the trailer to do a scene, and it's very, very hard. And who the hell wants to do that? 
There's no amount of money in the world that can pay you. It's going to make you happy in that situation. You've got to believe in what you're doing. And if you believe in what you're doing, you know that I have the confidence in myself, at least at that point, to say, I think it's worth saying. And I think it's honest. And what the effects are. Well, I think it's one thing to have freedom to create, which in a democratic system one never prohibits. It's when you want to take your creation, no matter whether it offends community standards or not, and put it on the commercial market, which is really what we're talking about. It's a very patronizing attitude to art and to artists. They are these sort of wild, crazy people, and because we believe in freedom, God help us, we have to allow them to do their you know, silly things, but we certainly don't have to allow them to get them to other people. Only when our culture can move towards uh, other values, other structures, other ideals, uh, is it possible to do away with uh, things like pornography, violence. It's, uh, it's all the product of these, uh, culture, of these um, cultural stru structures. You can't uh, obliterate it simply by um, stopping the uh, screening of pornographic films. You have to uh, get down to the uh, um, social structures that produce the desire for those films. Any person who is a control freak, any person who wants control, find, must find video the most threatening uh, de technological development ever because there's freedom to record, to change, to edit, to, to uh, exchange tapes. Uh, the technology of film, even 8 millimeter film, is, is too clumsy. But, but, but cassette, video cassette, is, is, is really quite, is freedom of the image. Well, you see, video nasties um, fit in quite understandably to what I understand to be the British tradition of exercising um, a kind of moral control over what, not just children, but others, older people, see. I would be foolish uh, to comment, whether in a knowing or an unknowing fashion, about what Jim Furman and his colleagues are doing. I do know that they start to repeat myself from a different tradition. We have tried to define the kind of video nasty that is still beyond the pale or that would still need cuts, and the kind that probably wouldn't. Um, but there is no official. Video nasty is not a term of art in any way. It's just uh, a label, very convenient for the press because it sounds good in headlines. But it doesn't actually mean a single thing. There's no recognizable quality that runs through all video nasty. And we're trying to clarify how that operates, but it's, it's still evolving. We shall learn a lot in the next three or four years. I think these are early days, and because of the volume of stuff we have to deal with, we can't always consider all the finer issues that we'd like to consider. How can someone who is my age, my, my contemporary, see a film and say that I cannot see the film? I mean, it's, I don't understand that. I think there was a lot of fear in the industry that horror as, as a genre was illegitimate. Um, but the interesting thing about Videodrome is that it really puts the case against video nasties. That is, in fact, the subject of the film. And a thoughtful viewing of Videodrome would simply confirm the, the campaigns that were run by several newspapers against video nasties and most of what was said in Parliament. The film totally acknowledges the dangers of sadistic videos. I wanted to posit the possibility that a man exposed to violent imagery would begin to hallucinate, would begin to... Uh, I wanted to see what it would be like, in fact, if what the censors were saying would happen, did happen. I was... I... I... was... video drones first... victim. Who's behind it? What do they want? I want you, Max. Come to me. <laughs>